Seeing my product on shelves in the very first store was a very exciting moment for me. But the sales results from this first store, although positive, ended up hiding a secret that would later come back and haunt me when my startup was trying to scale up. My product was a miniature lighting device called the Pop-Up Microlight, which illuminates any surface it's attached to, including the buttons of a remote control. And by this point in my product journey, I had already had written interest from Blockbuster Video and an agreement with a manufacturing partner, which I talked about in my two previous videos. But it was still early and I only had 3D printed prototypes and no actual sales validation yet. Although everyone I spoke with told me they loved my product, I knew that didn't necessarily mean it would sell well. And I suggest you take any positive feedback from people who haven't paid to buy your product with a grain of salt. My product didn't cost enough to sell profitably online, so my strategy was focused on brick and mortar retail stores. So my first sales test ever was at a local Ace Hardware store. Ace Hardware is really great for testing new products because most of their stores are individually owned and they can carry whatever product they want to. Most other big retail chains are corporate owned and require a much higher level of approval to test out a new product. But with my local Ace Hardware, all I needed to do was to convince the store manager to test out my product. Well, you'd think after pitching my product to top executives at Blockbuster Video that I discussed in my previous video, that by now pre presenting my product to a local store manager would be easy. But no, I was still incredibly nervous to talk to him. I think the first day I tried, I even convinced myself that he was too busy and I should come back another day. When you put so much of yourself into creating something, it can make you feel very vulnerable sharing it with others who you think may be critical of it. And I bet you can relate with your own product idea. So by this point, we had moved from Alaska to Hawaii and we were living on a small island of Kauai. So my choices for test stores were extremely limited. But you don't need to live in a big city or especially in Silicon Valley to make headway with a new product. I did it from two of the most remote locations in the United States. And yes, all this moving around was before we had our, our son. Since my product wasn't yet manufactured, I had to build these test units manually on my own. So first I built and assembled six units that were 3D printed and fully functional by this point. But I also needed retail packaging, so I made six homemade blister packs. These consisted simply of a paperboard card with the product details printed on it in color, and then just a off-the-shelf stock see-through plastic blister that protected the part. And you could still, uh, it was transparent, so you could see the part. And then this was just glued onto the paperboard backing to hold the product in place. Next, I built a retail display box to hold these six units, similar to what you commonly see holding products sitting by cash registers. Finally, I included a note with the product, explaining these were early prototypes and that the customer could get a free production unit once available. The only problem is I had no idea what would be, quote, good results. Selling three units per day or three per week or three per month or three every hour. I needed a sales baseline. So for several weeks before presenting my product to the Ace Hardware store manager, I checked the store almost daily to try to count how many similar products had been sold during that time. Those results were all over the place and many products didn't sell any units at all after, even after a few weeks. So I kind of decided if I sold a couple units per week, then I'd be happy with that. Although secretly I dreamed they would all sell in one day. Finally, my product was in a display box for sale at the front register of Ace Hardware. I was nervous every day when I came back to check on it, fearing that I wouldn't sell any. But after two weeks of the sales test, I had sold all six units. So I quickly came to the conclusion that the product would sell on average three units per week per store. Of course, for all I knew, it could have been a single person that bought all of them, which would have totally invalidated my results. And it maybe was my wife, but I don't think so. But the dreamy entrepreneur came out of me and I quickly did the following calculation. And I'm gonna bet you've probably done similar calculations to figure out how, many, how much money you can make or how many units you can sell. So what I did is I took three units per week 
per store. And then I multiplied that by 52 weeks in a year. And then I multiplied that by 5,000 Ace Hardware stores. And I came up with 780,000 units that I could sell per year. I'm going to bet you've, like I said, you've probably already done some similar mental gymnastics with your own product, trying to estimate how much money it can generate. Well, after this one short sales test in one store at one cash register, I felt I'd validated the product enough and I was ready and excited to scale this up quickly. Dumb move, John. It turns out that my sales data, well, it wasn't totally valid. But I was over optimistic and in a rush, which caused me to miss some critical issues. If I had only slowed down and been more thorough with my sales validation, I could have seen and resolved these issues while they were still small. But no, I was in a big rush and I started ramping up manufacturing. So what did I miss? Well, it turned out that my packaging didn't do a very good job at demonstrating what the product can do and why you would even want it. Also, I made the huge mistake of doing zero marketing. I assumed that just having my product in a store was all the marketing I needed to do. I just figured people would see it there, read the package, understand it, and know instantly why they need it. But that wasn't the case, and it rarely is for a new product. People not only needed to know my product existed, but most importantly, they had to know why they needed it. I was counting on my packaging to do all of the selling, yet the messaging was all wrong. After I realized this, I began doing a lot more testing on the package design, working to improve its ability to sell the product on its own. But by this point, I had already purchased a few thousand packaged units with the old packaging. So I ended up with a bunch of units with ineffective packaging that I had to sell before I could afford to purchase new units with better packaging. If I would have spent more time up front optimizing my packaging, it would have saved me a lot of time and money. Honestly, in hindsight, the best thing I could have done was hang out in that store and talk to any customers I saw that were even looking at my product or shopping for similar products. But that seemed too scary to me back then, and it was all I could do to get the courage to even talk to just the store manager. This does get easier, though, with practice, and about a year later, I was more confidently pitching my product to retailers at a major trade show in Las Vegas. If you just slow down, do a lot of testing, always seek advice, and get as much feedback as possible from potential customers, you will ultimately reach your product goals much faster and with less mistakes. If you enjoyed this video, be sure to watch this video next.